Hello and welcome to another freshly baked episode of Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Upreti and it smells good. On the show this week, we have the new HTC One A9, the Android iPhone. After Apple, it's time for Chiku. We have the new Chiku Q Terra smartphone. And Rohit puts on some Bose headphones. All this and more on Gadgets and Gizmos. So many Android smartphone makers try to replicate the iPhone's design, but nobody could manage to come as close to what HTC has done. They're out with their new smartphone. It's called the HTC One A9, and it looks like an Android iPhone. This is HTC's new smartphone, HTC One A9. A phone that would be known as HTC's iPhone. Why? Well, because it looks like the iPhone. All metal unibody design, those beautifully cut edges, and the back with antenna lines and the protruding camera. Well, the only difference is the logo. With the HTC One A9, HTC says that this is the design worth imitating, and I totally agree, man. Every phone should look like this. This is a beautiful phone, you know. Or it's who are you? Who are you? Am I me or are you me? I am myself. You figure out who you are. Okay. So this is the HTC One A9. The design is beautiful, obviously, and the five-inch screen size makes this phone perfect for one-handed usage. The phone is slim and slippery, so get a phone cover ASAP. We got a full HD AMOLED display here, and we say thank you HTC for taking this decision. Now it might not be the best display in town, but it looks good. The colors benefit from good black levels and contrast. So overall, everything looks a bit more saturated on this panel. Viewing angles are decent in most conditions too. The front boom sound speakers have gone and made way for the fingerprint scanner, which works very well. Now this is one of the first phones to run on the Snapdragon 617 processor. Now it's not the fastest one, it's not as fast as the one that you get in the 800 series but then if I talk about regular usage which would be in surfing the web, making those calls, watching videos on YouTube and playing those games, you won't really face any stutters or lags whatsoever. But then the kind of price that it comes at, you would want more, you know, in terms of processing power at least. After the Nexus, it's the HTC One A9 that features Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box. HTC has really slimmed down its UI this time. The feel has been retained though, just some minor omissions here and there. Idea is to give users more stock-like experience. And we are not complaining. Coming to the camera, HTC's Ultra Pixel camera is retained on the front. And it does a good job, you must say. It fills in the light, making your pictures bright. At the rear, you get a 13MP camera with f2.0 pacha. The camera app is clean and simple with some new and handy modes to try on. It lets you shoot in RAW, there is Zoe and image stabilization always helps. Overall, it's a decent camera, better than what we got on the M9. But not at par with the competition at the same time. Coming to the 2150mAh battery, well, it doesn't sound much and it isn't. All the Snapdragon update will allow you to quick charge but yes, you will have to charge your phone twice in a day. HTC One A9 is priced at 29,990. And to sum it up, we'll just say that HTC is trying really hard. They always do. And with the One A9, we don't have any complaints. In fact, we are almost tempted to say go by, uh, but we won't. Some smartphones, they leave you speechless and I find myself in pretty much the same situation because I, I don't know what to talk about design spoken about it you know already performance it's not the best in class but it's decent camera HTC always has done a great job with their cameras and the battery life you know really can't expect a great a big battery to be crammed in the phone this size so in the end I would just say this is the phone for you HTC enthusiasts or uh, for someone who's looking for an Android iPhone 
So if you love apples, then you would also want to try Chiku. Uh, we're not talking about any fruits here. We're talking about a smartphone. Chiku is a company that is out with their new offering. It's called the Chiku Q Terra. And here is Sahil taking a bite of it. We have affordable smartphones, we have super expensive smartphones, and then we have got something called mid-range smartphones, which cost around about 20K. Last year, we saw the super OnePlus One launch in that price band. Early in the year, we saw the OnePlus Two, and then came the Moto X Play, which was quite superb. This time around, I am testing a new smartphone from a new Chinese company, pronounced Chiku. Yes, the fruit Chiku and the phone in question is the new Qterra 808. Now on paper, this phone has all the ingredients of a high-end Samsung. So let's find out if this phone delivers on that promise and tastes as good as a Chiku. Now the main calling card of the Qterra 808 is design. Now the engineers at Chico have overcome the Herculean task of cramming in a massive 6 inch display inside a frame which would normally be used for a phone with a 5.5 inch screen. As you can see I have the iPhone 6s Plus and uh, it consumes around about the same amount of space as the Qterra 808 which is absolutely insane. Even in terms of build quality this phone is superbly built, it uses a full rock solid metal frame which feels really nice in your hands and is really solid. Also, this phone design wise reminds us a bit of the two year old HTC M7 which was a superb phone in its own right. The big difference being this is slightly bigger. Now the screen also on this phone is really good, it's got a full 1080p resolution which is decent and it's really bright and it has got good viewing angles. Performance wise you get a super fast 6 core processor coupled with 3GB RAM and also 16GB of onboard storage. Performance of this phone is trouble free and most people will feel that they are using a really high end phone. On the back, Chico has added this dual camera setup, there are two. 13 megapixel cameras and one camera is actually a black and white camera which is just to enhance the sharpness of your photos and both in daylight and nighttime the picture quality is really good and you get really nice colors and good amounts of details you also get a dual led flash which means if you're in total darkness you'll you can use the flash and don't you don't end up with overexposed photos on the front you get a 8 megapixel camera which is pretty decent and it's going to be really good for selfies and also Skype videos. Now the most amazing bit about this phone is its battery life because it is absolutely insane. You get almost two days of charge time on this phone and this phone supports quick charge capabilities which means that this phone is a real road runner. On our PC mark test which is a really strenuous test that we run on uh, all our test units, this phone scored around about 12 hours and 18 minutes which is the highest we have ever got on a smartphone which means this phone will really perform well and by the way there's also a fingerprint scanner out here on the back which means I can do this to unlock the phone. Now this phone is not without flaws. For starters, this massive 6 inch canvas could have used a higher resolution and perhaps the colors could have popped a little more. Suffice to say, the colors don't pop out here like you'd find on a high-end Samsung phone. So if you're really a stickler for the screen, then probably you're not going to like this screen a lot. On the back, this camera has some autofocus issues. So if you don't manually intervene, you're going to end up with a lot of blurred photos. This is not nice, of course. Also. This interface, this custom Android interface is decent, uh, it has got a lot of cool features but at the same time this means that it's not going to receive the update to Android Marshmallow very quickly and you are going to see some bugs here and there which of course is again not nice. But apart from these minor niggles, I have no hesitation in saying that this phone is probably the best smartphone you can buy for under 22,000 rupees 
and if you get an invite for it then you can get it for even cheaper which is quite amazing now with that let me spend some alone time with my new fruit There's something that a man cannot do but a robot can. Here is Shivan with his freshly discovered robot. He says it's pretty cool. So cool that the army uses it. Remember the little toy cars we had back in the day? Well, times have changed and today we're taking a look at the next generation of military toys and take a sneak peek into what an unmanned ground vehicle is all about. So let's replace this with this and let's replace this with that. is a mini UGV, an unmanned ground vehicle developed by DRDO which comes with a battery operated remote control unit. It is essentially used in warfare scenarios to enter hazardous areas where human intervention is not possible and comes fitted with a robotic arm to measure and collect samples of chemical, biological and nuclear waste. I don't think I can go back to using those mini toy cars ever, ever again. It has these track wheels and I think it can go over any terrain. As you can see, we're in quite a rough area, but this vehicle doesn't seem to stop anywhere. Its mission modules include day and night inspection and marking of hazardous areas on a digital map. It is fully equipped with a wireless communication link for transferring data online to the operator control unit to ensure the security of our heroes on the border. So this was just a glimpse into the wide scope of UGDs and Gaurav is after my life to get this for Sahil because an unmanned ground vehicle is what it takes to clean up after one of Sahil's overnight house parties. Either way, it can be used for a lot more. And Today, I'm going to be talking about a lamp. Yes, a lamp. Actually, scratch that. I'm talking about a bulb. Yes, all of us use bulbs at our homes. Sometimes those bulbs are smart bulbs. But trust me, those bulbs are not like the one I'm trying out right now. Trust me, it's very, very cool. You should check it out. So out here I am testing out the IOTA light which is a smart bulb by a startup called Cube26. Now that's not very important but the cool thing here to note is that this is a smart bulb which you control using an app on both the iPhone and on Android smartphones. As you can see I have a color palette picker out here so if I choose a color and the color of the light is going to automatically change which is very cool in itself but there's a lot more that you can achieve out here. You can control multiple bulbs from the app itself. You can turn them on and off. And you can also sync up your music so that the uh, lights change in lockstep with the beat of the music you're listening to, which I am doing out here. More so, you can also turn on the kaleidoscope mode, which will automatically change colors, as I can do here. And as you can see, the colors of the bulb are changing automatically and if you're in for a seizure like most people are when they go for DJ concerts then you can turn on the strobe mode and automatically this is going to go into a strobe mode and it's going to be really harsh or maybe if you're in a sensuous mood then you can turn it on into a candlelight mode and it'll flicker like a candle and as you can see it's pretty dim it's very subtle it's a very neat effect overall out here 
and that's the basic crux of this this costs around about 1900 rupees which is very very expensive but the type of functionality you get out here is really cool and this is clearly the future of home automation that we see out here Now Rohit does only two things in life. Actually, it's four. He can't do four things. Yeah, so one is gaming and one is listening to music. And he has found this cool new pair of headphones from Bose called the Bose Soundlink 2, and he's been using them a lot. So time to go and annoy him. Or oh, Sharma ji, enjoying herself in the fine weather morning. But can you believe it? This is 2 p.m. man, afternoon. I was like morning, but somebody told me this is smog. You know, <laughs> normally I'm all for hearing people out and helping them with their problems, but there are a few cases where I make exceptions. <laughs> and she said you're not funny. I'm like, what are you saying? Not funny. And the bird is chirping. But thankfully, I have something to help me with this little problem. And she's like, this baby is yours, yar. I'm like, look at her, yar. But then she's like, she has the same hair style as you. You know? I'm like, oh no, this is every baby is bald, yar. <laughs> But can you believe it? It is not morning. These are the Bose Soundlink 2 headphones, the wireless solution for an army of audiophiles. At least that's what Bose claims. On first glance, these look classy, built with high-quality materials and a striking, subtle design that lends it an air of premium. They can bend and adjust to head sizes just fine, and the cans themselves are open enough to accommodate abnormally big ears like mine. They're extremely comfortable to wear too, with no noticeable fatigue even after prolonged use. The cans themselves are made from plush leather materials, so when they rest on your ears, there's no discernible sign of comfort. You also get a leather carry bag in the package, which is a nice touch. But the only thing we can complain about the design is the position of the volume controls. But since these are Bluetooth, they had to put these somewhere, didn't they? In our test, these paired very well with Android and iOS devices, and the Bluetooth range is decent enough to let you headbang to your favorite song without worrying too much about where the host device is. As long as they are somewhere within the vicinity of the phones, these maintain a connection just fine. As far as the sound quality goes, we were impressed with the detailed sound stage these things can produce. They are excellent with warm sounding tones and cover the upper ranges of the spectrum quite convincingly. The highs are nice and detailed while the mid range, while a little murky, is still reproduced well. The bass won't thump but is very accurate. There's a nice balance to the sound without any of the ranges overpowering the other. As with all Bose products, these are quite heftily priced. One of these will set you back about twenty thousand rupees, but you do get what you pay for. And baby, yar, what baby? I am like, I just met you only once. You do, you, you don't even look. You don't even talk to me. How can the baby be mine, yar? I don't even drink. You know that is. A... So that was our review of the Bose Soundlink 2, a very good pair of headphones, but unfortunately a little too expensive for the normal crowd. Buy it if you are an audiophile. And then I told her, look at the baby; it has a big nose. Yeah, I'm sure it's yours. She's going for DNA testing. <laughs> Wait, what baby? Hello. Time to see what's making news in the world of technology. It's time for tech news. Google's Project Loon, through which the online search giant plans to provide internet connectivity using balloons, will interfere with cellular transmissions of mobile operators in India. Telecom Minister Ravi Prasad said in a written reply to Rajya Sabha. The statement of the minister assumes significance in the backdrop of call drop problems faced by consumers due to poor network quality. Three international space station crew members landed safely in the Kazakh city of Zeskagan this Friday. A capsule carrying NASA astronauts was found by a search and rescue group whose four helicopters braved very strong winds and low clouds to reach the touchdown site. Left aboard the 100 billion dollar station are US astronaut and commander Scott Kelly and Russian flight engineers Mikhail Kornikov and Sergey Volkov. 
who are also in their final months of a year-long mission, the longest stint in space since crew began living on station in 2000. They are due to land on March 1st. Mark Zuckerberg is already teaching daughter Max quantum physics. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has his own way of going about parenting. Zuckerberg, who recently became a dad and who is on a two-month paternity leave, has posted a cute family picture on his Facebook timeline, showing him and wife Priscilla Chan reading a book on quantum physics with their week-old daughter Maxima. Tokyo's Metropolitan Police Department has unveiled a net yielding interceptor drone that will be used to hunt down and snare rogue quadcopters, according to reports from the Asahi Simban, an Asian review. A single drone will be initially deployed on trial basis from mid-December. Alright, with that, it's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed watching the episode. We'll be back next week and if you have any questions and queries, very good. We'll be back next week with more of Gadget and gizmos. <laughs>